have cloudy today. This is called the reformer. And maybe you have one at home, but maybe not. And um, I just want to show you what some exercises on the reformer would look like. Underneath here, we have these little springs. And they have different resistances. So I'm going to put a red and a red, which is um, two of the uh, most resistant springs that I have right now. It's not that, it's not super tight. Um, and then I'm just going to gently press out and in. And obviously, you can probably tell this is not a super difficult exercise. Uh, it, there's not a lot of resistance. But I'm just kind of warming up my body here. And instead of thinking about it being like a leg press, I'm going to think about a pull in just as much as an extend, lengthen out. Also, it's light enough that I'm not pushing against the shoulder pads with my shoulders, um, which is nice. I'm pressing my body into the mat, um, creating a little bit of resistance for my core. And four, three, two, and one. And then I'm gonna alternate stretching my heels like this. So this is super nice for warming up your feet. Hello. And um, when this is really heavily sprung, it's super nice because it really pulls your heel under. You can get an awesome calf stretch. And here I'm getting a pretty good calf stretch at more. So I'm just warming up my feet, warming up my system, because this is the first thing that I'm doing this morning, other than getting ready to come to work. And eight, seven, I hope some of you have this equipment at home, but um, it's kind of bulky and slightly expensive, so maybe you don't, but you can head into a Pilates studio and, and get these exercises when your Pilates studio is in your area. Open up and come on in. And then I'm gonna go wide leg, knees out, feet out, and press and come down. And instead of this being just like, you know, like a sumo squat type position or a grand plie, I'm actually thinking about my sit bones and they're spreading apart as they come down and growing back towards each other. Those sit bones don't actually, you know, make that movement, but that feeling of them coming towards each other and away from each other is what I'm going for. Because there are muscles there that if you think about spreading the sit bones apart and bringing them together, you can fire. And those are your pelvic floor muscles and the bottom part of your core. And four, three, or as Tanya and I call it, the pelvic house. The floor of your pelvic house. The roof being up here, the walls. All right, and then feet back in the middle, middle of the foot of the bar, and I'm gonna rock back and forth, getting a nice pelvic tilt up, which um, turns all of this on, also opens up the back, the space uh, between all of my lumbar vertebrae. And I have um, this moving platform that I'm on. So if I push with my feet too much, I push away. And so this is a way to check in and make sure that I'm initiating from here and not initiating by pushing my feet. And totally something that you can do um, at home too. You can think about your feet being on something like uh, thin ice and not wanting to break through. All right, four, three, two, and then I'm gonna come all the way up and all the way down. And this is harder on this machine than it is on the floor because I don't want the machine to push away, at least not in this um, version of this exercise. So the back of my legs are really firing to make that happen. Two. And 
one. All right. I'm gonna roll up to the side. Grab my um, straps here. Put them here where I can get them. And reduce my springs to red blue and make it a little bit lighter. And put my feet in the straps. This is everyone's, this is always a fun experience when people are doing it for the first time because they don't necessarily believe that the straps are going to hold them. Okay, so I'm going to straighten a bit. I'm doing my squat, but this time in a, um, in this kind of like semi open um, position or what a PT or movement professional would call an open kinetic chain. It is semi-open kinetic chain because my legs aren't just totally loose, but they're definitely not on any stable surface. And I love this for biasing, um, first of all, my core organization. I have to organize over here and like fire up my center so that I'm not like um, baby deer walking for the first time. And then I really feel the backs of my legs working in this version of like a squat. And then you can really test it out if you go single leg. So we're gonna go seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And then put the other side in. And then also just checking in on um, asymmetries. Like, is one hard leg harder to control than the other? Um, for me, it's this left side, which has been feeling kind of weak lately. Four, three. I can feel that it's harder to stay stable and not let that leg kind of jet out to the side. And one. All right, both legs back in, and I'm going to stretch the back of my legs by coming up. And down, I'm also practicing this hip hinge thing, where I'm folding right here at my hips to come up. And then as I come down, I'm stabilizing here so that my back doesn't arch up. Checking in to see if my belly pooches up. And if it does, then I know that I'm not stabilizing. So these are some of the cues that you would get from your body teacher if you were taking class um, at a studio. Well, especially if you're getting one-on-one -on -one attention. But if you're in a class, these are things that you should be thinking about on your own. I find this one really interestingly challenging for some of the high-level athletes that I work with it's difficult for them to lower their legs down without arching their, their back or, or pooching their stomach out. And then I'm gonna bend one leg and keep the other one straight. And I love this for a nice inner thigh stretch. And some people find this to be really mentally challenging. It's hard to figure out what is happening with your body here. Um, if this is a very unfamiliar movement and you're doing one side is doing one thing and the other side is doing another thing and it is so interesting how some people have a hard time alternating side to side on this. Um, so a lot of Pilates is like making new connections from your brain to your body and this one is one of those exercises that does that for a lot of people. And one more. And while I'm here, I'm going to just bring it up, put my hands in the smaller straps, bring my legs to a tabletop position, and bring my arms down and up. This is really nice for connecting my shoulders to my core. Just holding my legs in this position while maintaining good core stability is difficult. Um, adds to that this arm movement, but interestingly, 
This arm movement helps me connect my shoulder to my core, as I said. So this is, for me, easier to do, even though my arms are working, than if I didn't have my arms um, working, because it fires up my shoulder muscles that attach to my spine and my, my lats, and so it, um, it connects everything together. All right, and then this way also. And four. Is that you, Elsie? Three. Two. And one. And then one arm in front, one arm to the side. So just like with the legs, we get some hinging at the shoulder. Like, can you move your shoulders without moving the rest of your body? And then moves into some coordination stuff. This one doesn't tend to be as difficult as the leg coordinating thing that we did earlier, but definitely it is still kind of weird for people to do one thing different with the right arm from the left arm and then alternate side to side. It's a good brain tease. And it's done. Okay. So now for my favorite core exercise on this machine. Um, it is surprisingly difficult and probably looks a lot more difficult, or a lot, looks a lot easier um, from T on, on video, like from your end, um, than it feels. But so I'm starting with my hips over my knees and my shoulders over my wrists. And my thighs and, um, and arms are vertical. And then I'm going to come forward until um, my thighs are a little bit leaning forward but touching the shoulder pad. And I'm gonna pull inward. And this, if done correctly, really fires up my core. If done incorrectly, still an exercise, still a good exercise, but you don't necessarily get your lower abs as much. You'll get more of your shoulders by pulling, pulling this machine forward, which is not necessarily what I was, what I really love this exercise for. What I really love this exercise for is the kind of lower ab um, engagement that happens with this pull. I also decreased the um, resistance before I started this exercise because if I make it too heavy, then I will tend to just cheat. All right, and pull back and stretch. And then I'm gonna go on my knees and pull with the straps like so. <laughs> And then all the way up, four. This one is a tricky one because people tend to, if they don't engage, fall forward. They always have to spot this one. Like literally 90% of the people that do this the first time almost fall forward. Or they're like leaning back like this, which isn't the point. Straight up and down and pulling. All right. Okay. Now for a nice yummy stretch of my side. I'm gonna close my legs over this way, cross my arm over, stabilize here so that I'm not like just like resting, and push away, really open up that bottom side, and then curve over and away. So nice for arm stability. Earlier we were talking about uh, if you care at all about open kinetic chain and closed kinetic chain. And now my, my arm is in a closed kinetic chain because now it's on a stable surface. Whereas when I was holding the straps, it was an open chain. And those are two different kinds of challenges. What can you hear? It, oh, it's not Elsie. It was, who's over there? I can't see who's watching. Um, it is um, a different challenge. Why should you care? It's a different challenge for your shoulder, something um, where your muscles fire a little bit differently when it's an open chain versus closed chain. And so we want to do both. And then we're going to switch to the other side.
challenging and the shoulders together and changing it to red blue um, actually for me that makes things easier more resistance makes this movement easier because then I'm not just like legs slipping away I'm working on a nice straight plank position trying not to arch my back I'm working on isolating this shoulder opening which is super nice for anybody that does um, like handstands or just anybody that has to like really push it for their sport or activity. It's like can you stabilize at your center so that your shoulders and arms can have an easier time doing what they need to do. Two more. Two. And one. All right. Now, last thing, last series of things, is I'm going to adjust this. And get out my jumping board. Because this is always super fun for people, especially when they're coming back from not being able to jump for a long time. So I'm gonna make it super light, just a red right now. And the feeling that people get when they haven't been able to jump and all of a sudden are given permission to jump just like lights up people's faces. So we start with this like, this is the initiation of the drop jump. My heels are staying flat on the board. And then I'm gonna rise to my tippy toes and then come back down and control the landing. Rise to the tippiest of toes, like the top tips of my toes and come on down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and jump. And actually, because the weight of your legs is such that if you don't engage your core, your legs will fall down to the ground. You really have to work your abdominals. All right, so my feet are in parallel. And then now I'm gonna turn them out just a little bit and work on having my knees follow my, my feet. And this jump is slow enough that I can really, really work on building a new pattern if my tendency is to cave my knees in um, relative to my foot. And back to parallel. I'm gonna do single leg. And often when someone's doing rehab, I'll check to see like, what is their endurance on one leg like this compared to another. And obviously this is much harder to do in standing. And sometimes people are ready to do this before they're ready to go with standing. So we'll do it here. And it's fun, it's good exercise, and it just feels amazing to be able to jump again. And then I'm gonna switch to the other side. And you can just compare. What are the mechanics like? Is there um, any weird compensations happening that they could benefit from some instruction? I can stand right in front of them and see where um, their leg is going. And then for a little bit more coordination, I'm going to go one side and the other. challenging it is for your brain but you know life and sport is like that you can make sure that people can do these complicated things and still maintain their good alignment sideways, FYI, but we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is end with my second favorite exercise on this 
sushi. First favorite being the one with beets, potato strips. This one's my second favorite. This kind of like takeoff position, like you're gonna run and then a push. <laughs> you can see my hip wasn't being stable. It's turning like this. I'm trying to keep it square. The light moves up. And then slide out, bend my front leg, and this feels amazing. I feel this front of my thigh, front of my hip, in my oblique, all up into my chest practically. This feels so good. And also, this is just a nice exercise for like glutes to take off for running. All right, awesome. Other side. I wanted to keep doing that. I haven't done that in a while.